Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. I was messaged on Discord by the user NoStock, who asked me to check out the Moses Yufi trilogy, specifically the song Ocean, the live performance of it, describing it as dramatic and beautifully unorthodox. I'm kind of intrigued by that. I like unorthodox music, even if I don't generally enjoy it. I like listening to music get pushed to the brink and beyond, exploring new realms. So unorthodox is usually a word that piques my interest. With that said, let's dive into this and see what the Moses Yufi Trio is bringing to the table today. We got bass, keyboard, and drums. Guitar, maybe? Oh, bass. Finger pick, too. More or less a two beat phrase puts us in 4 4. I could put us in 2 4 as well, but that seems unnecessary. Enjoying a little bit of bass noodling. Look at that uh, symbol. <laughs> yeah. Just socketing that groove into that piano line so effortlessly. Some of that jazziness. Dude, all the ghost notes. Beautiful melody, too, for our solo section here. Oh man, the Hitchcock style back of the shirt transition. See, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I was given an option to check out a longer song, but uh, the requester mentioned that this was a solid track right here. Said that the uh, the only reason to check out the other one would be that it is a bit more comprehensive and longer, but that this one really showcases the skill. And I'm glad I picked it. I think that this is a fantastic condensation. Condensing? That's probably a better... Condensing of their sound. Though I will say, before we get into any 
analysis, I do kind of wish I had gone with the other track, which is called Minor Issues. If you're interested in diving further, that would probably be the track you should check out next. But I, I kind of wish I'd gone with that simply because this doesn't feel unorthodox. I really enjoy this. I'm going to be checking out more of this group for sure. This song sold me on them. So job, you know, mission accomplished, job well done right there. But I did find that it kind of under sold me, if that makes sense. Uh, I was expecting something just very different than this. So what is this? We have a pedal tone that rides throughout most of this track, that bum 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 bringing that rhythmic element into the keyboard work. What's really interesting is at a certain point of this track, I began to hear this as a metal riff, where you kind of ride a pedal tone for 75% of your riff, and then at the end you have a cool little idea like dun da da dun 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 da da dun da da dun da da dun da 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 dun da 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 and you have that that punctuation at the end of your phrase, that cool the cool lick, right? That's kind of what this is. We have that pedal tone for 75% of it, and then at the end of this phrase we have this beautiful jazzy chord progression. Also sort of melodic in the way that it's not just uh, a series of chords with equal length notes on them. There is a rhythmic quality to it. There's changing pitches. It's just, it's a melody comprised of chords. And the chords are very spicy at that. I absolutely love the progression through them. I love the coloring that they bring to the song. I love the way that they resolve. It's all really well done. And at least to me, that one idea in isolation sells me on their uh, their harmonic knowledge, their, their chord theory knowledge. It's the one part that really makes me want to dig into them more that says that this song is only showcasing the, you know, the tip of the iceberg for this group. But I did find it comical, at least. I was like, oh, that's kind of like one of those heavy metal riffs. Uh, a stationary pedal tone for quite some time and then something interesting at the end and then back to the pedal tone. Um, I liked the bass riffing at the beginning too. I thought that a little bit of that improvisation stuff was great and it sounded mixed well against the piano but when the drums came in I found it more difficult to hear the bass. And I think it's just because they were the glue holding everything together. Rhythmically the piano and drums are just going off. Harmonically, the piano's going off, and the bass is just holding everything together, being that more uh, standardized composition, just kind of walking their bass line, keeping everything standard so that the other two instruments can just be wild. But I'd love to hear more of the melodic playing that we got from the bass during the intro. I think that would be pretty awesome. The drummer comes in, I don't know how he found this, the, the piano rhythm felt a bit odd. It's this two beat phrase full of wild syncopation uh, and the drummer's like, I got a perfect beat for that <laughs> and comes in, not only sockets himself within that and finds a perfect groove to go with it, but also functions within the space of the piano's rhythm and plays around that as well and creates this beautiful syncopation against the syncopated idea. It is just a funky drum pattern, but it sounds so natural. I just, what? I don't know, man. I love listening to drummers who know what they're doing. I, I think that's become apparent, I think, over the years. One of the things I tend to focus on in a lot of videos is just fantastic drum work it stands it's not even something that needs to stand out in the mix my ear is going to pick it up anytime i love great drummers and this dude yeah and the way too he's playing it it just looks so effortless for him to play and it's just i love it 
Good stuff. Bringing in the cross stick. Uh, he switches off to hitting the rim, I think, just after that. The camera had panned off of him, but we weren't getting a cross stick sound anymore, but we also weren't getting a sound of hitting the drum head either. So lots of playfulness with utilizing the entire drum kit, more so than, you know, this is the snare, there's one way to hit it, right? <laughs> utilizing every part of the drum kit. Love that type of experimentation. Also, uh, what was that swirly symbol? It was like, it was like they took a regular symbol and then sawed uh, a spiral into it. And so it just kind of hangs as a spring now. And that sounded really cool at the beginning, uh, coming in with the, uh, starting quiet and doing the, uh, getting terms right now, growing in, in volume though. Um, crescendo. There we go. Doing the crescendo roll on it. Why couldn't I think of that? It just, it's a very cool texture though. I, I don't know if, if that's a custom made symbol or if you can just go down to the store and buy one of those, but more drummers need that, especially drumming like this, which is a bit more gentle. I don't know necessarily that that would work so well in a metal environment. It is a bit more of a soft spoken symbol. But it has such a great, it's like the opposite of a china. It's quieter, it's less harsh, it's less sharp, it's it's just a gentle cymbal sound. <laughs> it's like, it's sort of like a hi-hat, but getting the shimmer of a ride, or even a crash. Just without that really aggressive initial attack that you would get from like a crash. It's just, I love it, it's beautiful. I, I've never seen anything like it, but it makes so much sense. Uh, and then all the ghost notes. Like, this drummer's just super talented. The final thing in the song that, um, honestly, it's the final thing, period. I don't, I think I've talked about everything, is our piano solo. I really love this melody writing. It harkens back a bit to bebop, but a, a modern take on it. There is some experimentation in there harmonically. We have some really neat accidentals in there, which is just playing a note outside of the key that we're in or even just the chord that we're currently in. Uh, some really beautiful ideas coming out of that. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious if it was all done on the fly. Um, improvisation, I mean, whether it is or isn't, I enjoyed it. I'd love to hear more. Once again, though, it's, it's one of those situations where I'd like more. I want more of the bass. I want more of this melodic uh, piano work. I want more of the solo uh, melody line. A lot of this song felt like the riff, and that kind of gives us an ABA section to this, uh, where we come in with the riff, and then we have a melodic solo, and then we end with the riff. Very jazzy in that in that realm. Um, and so, like, what I take away from this is that these are probably some jazz kids who might have gotten into something outside of jazz. I do feel, feel like there's some modern inspiration in this from... You know, everything from, from electronic music, especially with some of the rhythmic ideas that we have in here, uh, to math rock even a little bit. Anything that's sitting in that palatable experimentation realm that we see in, in some of the more palatable <laughs> genre styles, um, like IDM uh, would be one of the electric realms, I think, where we could find rhythms like this. And so it brings a bit of both worlds together. It feels very modern, but there's obviously some older inspirations in here as well. Um, and I just love the combination of those two. It's all done in a very well put together package. I'm, I'm just left wanting more, which honestly, as I've mentioned in the past, that's usually one of the best things you can get from me as a reaction to your work is give me more <laughs> whether I was underwhelmed or or completely sold that's uh that's what you especially with something like this which could be akin to a single it's uh, a video that they put together of a performance which always has a bit of a marketing element to it hey this is who we are if you like it check out more uh, more so than if we had listened to, you know, just a random song on Spotify or something off of their YouTube topic page or something like that. 
so yeah, mission accomplished. I, I'm checking out more of these. Um, anything I want to say about this? I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, yeah, it was only a three minute, 10 second video. And when you get rid of the opening 30 seconds or so, we're really looking at a two and a half minute song once everything starts kicking in. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Moses Yuffie Trio. I think earlier I said the Moses Yuffie Trio and it's not, there's no the at the beginning of this. Uh, they only have 3,000 subscribers. I'm not sure about their Spotify numbers, but since they are a smaller group, I'll put some of their links in the description. Uh, try to boost their numbers up a little bit. They certainly deserve more attention. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments. Give me your perspectives, opinions, uh, thoughts about this. Let me know if you agree with anything I said, if there's some things that you heard that I didn't talk about, any of that kind of stuff. Maybe you think I was completely wrong about something. Go ahead and let me know. Uh, above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three of those. Um, tomorrow, I'll be back. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.